Hello, good afternoon. Hi. Um, seems like nowadays we will try to get more money somewhere, somehow. Yet, the harder we try to find, the harder we get. Okay. And before we get into the game theory that I'm going to talk about today, let's look at the disclaimer first. Okay, um, I represented USGFX, and we're regulated by ASIC and FCA, and we're here to notice that uh, <clears throat> trading forex, this kind of investment, may be suitable, may not be suitable for all investors, and past performance cannot guarantee same or similar results. It is advised to only invest money you're willing to risk. Okay, so this is me. And I've been told that this picture is not allowed to look like me because it was taken like a month ago. I'm a USGFX business manager and I do a lecture of business uh, and PIP Academy. And trading is something that I myself is really fond of. Though <clears throat> today my sharing, yes, it is related to the market, but it wouldn't be all about statistics or strategies because I'm sure a lot of lecturers will be focusing in on that today. So what would I be sharing exactly? What is game theory that I'm going to talk about? Okay. I'm going to show you a picture here. Okay. And later on, I will ask you about uh, this picture and have some questions. And if you think it suits you, raise your hand. Um, has anyone seen this movie yet? That's nice. I'm going to watch it after I get back to Taiwan. I'm from Taiwan, by the way. And um, I'm not here to do any spoiler since I haven't watched it. But um, the, this is the title that has something to do with my sharing. It's this part, Endgame. OK, what does Endgame mean to you? Well, obviously, if one doesn't have to see this movie, would we'll know that in the movie, good guys wins over bad guys, correct? Well then, what if we put this title to a forest documentary that each one of you starred in? How many of you would still think that you have a good ending or an outcome? Raise your hand. If you think that you can be doing well with a forex documentary called Endgame that you start in. R1, that's pretty nice, okay. Well, you see a difference. Why does this title has two different meanings in two different kind of games? Well, actually, it's because these two are two very different types of games. In game theory, we have infinite game and we have finite games. Finite games are simple. You played with only known players, the rules are set, and the object that you play is agreed upon each team or each party, like basketball. Okay, two teams compete, five, pers five people on the court, and you compete for 48 minutes. Whoever takes more points wins. But even the game is a little bit more complicated. Okay, you play with known and unknown players, the rules are changeable, and the object is to perpetuate the game, which means you have to last in this game as long as possible. Okay, so if you put finite players versus finite players, the system will be stable because after the game is won, then it is done. If you place infinite players with infinite players, the system is also stable because no one can actually beat the game since no one can actually win, then uh, everyone will be playing to survive, like in the Cold War. Okay, and I would like to think investment is also a type of infinite games. Why? Because there are a lot of investors we know and there are a lot of investors we don't know. And since we are playing to gain profits and to stay in the market, it has a lot like to the infinite game. But here's the thing. If we put finite players versus infinite players, what would happen? I believe that there are a lot of people here who think they are looking for an answer to beat the game to win, to win the game and to win it once and for all. 
he wants to find a solution. But in even against you can't win. So eventually a person will run it out of resources or will to play. And then they will drop out of the game. And that's when your account are busted or reach the stop out level. Okay, those are the terms of uh, finite players play playing infinite games. So how do one actually uh, invest in the right way, invest in the infinite way? There are five features that um, actually this theory, according to Mr. Simon Sinek, is more about entrepreneurs. But I think this is actually relatable to us as self-traders. We need to have a just cause, a courageous leadership, a trust team, a worthy rival, and a flexible playbook. Okay, I'll be going all through this point by point, and then uh, we'll break it out, and then see what does it actually means. Okay. And also, in the very end, I'm going to provide you with two trading time periods that, according to history, has over 70% of winning rate. Though this has to do with knowing investing, especially in Forex, is an infinite game. Okay, just cause. What does it mean with just cause? Actually, this is the thing that separates an investor from a gambler. <clears throat> I actually attend uh, the Thailand Expo two years ago, and I met a guy, uh, his name is Gaber, and he came to the uh, Expo and find our booth and asked me about our account terms and also whether or not we have a deposit bonus. I explained the whole thing to him. And after I was done, he nodded, and he said no words. So as a representative, I naturally would think that he's not satisfied. He must have something that he's keep looking for. So I asked him, Mr. Gaber, could you tell me what exactly is that you're looking for in the market? And he said, well, I have been losing, and I was looking for something to reduce my cost so that I could win more times in trading. So I asked him, could you tell me a little bit more about your trading? He said he is a guy who's using EA, and he's doing a martingale. So naturally, the result is not consistent. And also notice one thing. He had a ring on his left hand, although he is alone in the expo, which means his wife didn't come with him. So I said to him that, uh, Mr. Gaber, I noticed that you had a ring, and yet you're alone here uh, in the expo on Sunday. I assume that your wife does not like your little investment, maybe because that you keep, uh, you're not having a proper result. And he admitted. So I said, um, how about this? <clears throat> We can do it on an average account, but let's do this on a uh, more statistic basis. We can uh, go home and then we withdraw all the data, the quotation for a pair over the last decade. Okay? And then we will calculate it all the prices and then we'll see the trend. If the trend within a certain period of time repeats itself more than six or seven times over the last decade, which means it has a 6 or 7 percent repeating percentage, right? Then we trade on those kind of time period. Will that be a helpful strategy to us? He admitted, and then I said, well, then after that, you can withdraw all your winnings and spend more time with your wife. Because we already lose a lot of resources in this thing as well. We don't want to lose others, like the time that we spend with our family, all the time that I spend with our loved ones. Okay, this is the just cause. To know what you're doing in Forex, to know what you're doing in invest, and do not let uh, the outcome of your investment carry you away from the original reason. Okay, the second part is courageous leadership. I think this has to do with the help that we seek for. 
Um, there are a lot of education organizations here, and I know there are a lot of uh, people who come to the expo here as their mentor. But what kind of specialties that we need to seek for this kind of help? I think the best ones are those leadership that can look into our eyes and say they don't have all the answers. They can only teach us what they know. And they, they would like to share about their failing strategy or their failing history so that we would not repeat that again. But not, of, not a lot of those kind of people around here actually. Because you see a lot of um, advertisements, a lot of videos and clips that actually only talk about when they win. But we don't actually see how they lose. So that's why, like not so long ago, there are so many money games among the forex field. Okay, good ad good advertisement and uh, really good marketing, and yet they all have a bad ending. Why? Because in <clears throat> in the end, they are not looking forward to really help with help us help us gain any profit. They're only for the money that we're deposited in. So when they get their results, then eventually they will just run away. So that's why I think for us, the most important thing in seeking help is to have them tell us that they are brave enough to admit that have failed before and they are willing to share with us the failing history. Okay, uh, companionship. Uh, this is my broker, by the way. I'm a representative of this. Um, though I'm, I'm not here to talk actually about my broker, it's about the experience that we work with our individual brokers, even the local brokers. Okay. I went to Harbin uh, province in China two months ago. I went to discuss uh, business development with one of my affiliates in China. Uh, he's called Mr. Yuan. And <clears throat> I asked him about this uh, trustworthy thing because uh, we were talking about a few further development ship. And I asked him, um, so how do you feel like your business right now? He says it's okay, but in the beginning, he doesn't really like USGFX. And I said, no doubt, because at the beginning, I recall that you are acting like an asshole because you are telling me that your clients want to withdraw and withdraw it within a certain period of time and you wouldn't let me explain some slippage situations and stuff. So what do you, like, what exactly do you see in us that you change your attitude? He said it's actually about um, the vision that we had is about the same as he does. That forex industry has to work under a beehive system that the broker needs to keep the market transparent and keep the orders straight so that each investor could see the volume and also the risk that they're taking. He said, um, in China, yes, the government now is suppressing uh, this industry, but since there are a lot of people there and a lot of them are looking forward to invest in the future, this will be a big boom like in, within the next 10 years. So he has to find a trustworthy partner in, along the way. And that's where he thinks that we came in. Because after all his requirements and all those things that he requested, I'm still there with him. So that's the thing that he is looking for. And I learned it from him that if one broker, no matter who is inside the broker is connecting with you, okay, if he is persistent and he is willing to share what his point of view insights, then he is a trustworthy partner. Okay. Okay. Now the fourth part, a worthy rival. Well, um, it's a little bit conflicted that since I said in the beginning, uh, this is an infinite game. So we play with unknown brokers and known brokers. And yet we have to pick a worthy rival. No, this is not actually that picking some person that you want to defeat or a signal provider you think he's good and you want to outperform him. No. It's about the goals and boundaries that we set for ourselves. <clears throat> um, how many of you have these thoughts before that you want to profit 10% within each week or each month? Raise your hand. Okay. 
how many of you would like to have a uh, profit percentage over 50% within a year? Mm, okay. Well, <clears throat> which one do you think is easier to accomplish? The first one or the second one? The first one, raise your hand. To reach 10% each week? Okay, the second one. To reach 50% over a year. Okay. Uh, I'm here to inform you those are the thoughts of finite players. Because if you're looking to profit like 10% every week, you wouldn't be able to, you, you wouldn't be certain that the market could actually react to all our strategies. Yes, we have like a higher percentage of repeating, and yet we cannot really actually make sure to us that we don't lose out more than 10% from our winnings. So what is an infinite way of thinking to the market that expect us to profit? Well, actually, if we took our strategies um, really seriously, and we look into the repeat level, like how many times has our strategy worked throughout the past month, throughout the past season, throughout the past year, throughout the past decades, and what percentage we're looking for for it to repeat itself in the next year. So if we look into this then, if we think that this is going to repeat itself, I think at least over like 70% within the next year, then we can uh, use that as a statistics to establish our uh, profit expecting, which is 10% each week, right? So we look into the period of time, we think that has the highest percentage that we can do, and then we actually take in the orders. That's the infinite way of picking a worthy rifle. It's always about us. It's our strategy, our winning, our losing, our history. And okay, the last part of an infinite game is a flexible playbook. Okay. And a flexible playbook means that you act according to your strategy, but also according to your thoughts about the market. And I think it's a little bit like uh, the concept between a cook and a chef. Okay, so what's the concept between these two? A cook can only like act upon recipe, while the chef will manage his original idea. A cook serves dishes, while chef is in charge of the kitchen. Okay, so if we stick on to a certain indicator or a certain uh, EA that we're trading, a certain strategy that we established. And then we, we repeat it every single day, regardless of the market movement and how the warnings that we have received before, then we are only cooks. We're only doing with the recipe. Anyone could be a cook. Okay, if you're just following the orders, you're reacting, not responding. But if we start to think uh, in an infinite way, if we start to notice some of the warnings on the market movement, if we start to look like for instance, if the previous candlestick is covering now our candlestick, is it dangerous for us or is it suitable for us to trade? If we take this into consideration and then we act upon RSI indicators or moving average indicators, that is more suitable because we're responding to the market movements. So that is the chef that within us. So again, everyone could be a cook, but I think we all need to aim to be a chef. Okay, <clears throat> now this is the part of the infinite game, the mindset that we ought to have while we're dealing with Forex. Now, what time period is it suitable for us to seek for the repeatment? Okay, um, I'm going to share some of the um, time period that I have and also later on I'll be talking about a little bit with the bankroll management and these two I think the essential elements which will let us be able to to profit and to sustain in the infinite game okay so each line here represents a year how the opening price has been moving on euro US dollars could you take for a minute and look at the chart and figure out 
which time duration. Okay, doesn't have to be a certain because I didn't put any month or date be, be, uh, below it. But can you find out a certain period of time that the market has been always rising or always falling? This is the homework that I think an investor should do whenever, uh, what, no matter whatever strategies that he is establishing, he needs to know the movement. Okay, let's take a minute and look at the chart and see if we can find it. And if you've already saw the, uh, the duration, you can raise a hand and let me know. Okay, I'm going to give out mine later, but uh, you can try to look out it first. The length of it doesn't have to be a certain part. It doesn't have to be you no know, all long period. You can say, for instance, this type of period really short. This one has been falling. This one has been falling. This one has been falling, 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 which means over 50%, right? So if you trade on this time duration, you could be winning. This one is playing. This one's falling. This one's rising. This one's falling. So. We find out one duration just by picking up trends, right? So once if we add on the date below this chart, then we'll be able to know maybe this is a good timing if we place trades here. Okay, has anyone find a duration for themselves? Okay, I know this is not that easy, so maybe we can also do this uh, when we get back home. Okay, what has find one? Okay. This one? Okay. Okay. Dropping, 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 pricing. Okay. Well, maybe this is this is a this is an interesting theory, and this is also a thing that we could look forward to establish. And uh, I think what you said has uh, this duration has over I think uh, roughly taken about like sixty percent because I see six lines that's repeating the same thing as what you're saying, which four ones has not been uh, repeating themselves. It's okay. Let's look at the other chart and see what I'm actually on it. Okay. <clears throat> if you place buy order on November the 30th and you close that order on January the 4th, you will have a 70% winning over the last 10 years, which means this trend repeats itself seven times over the past decades, okay? Because um, if I place the chart with the last two decades, it would be too complicated, and you wouldn't be able to like see it really visually like this. So I only put a decade's data up here. But I actually draw out two decades' data, and I find this time period is actually repeatable, and the thing that we can all keep in notice. Okay, the second part, we can see another trading product, trading pair. It's gold. Okay, uh, I think this one uh, we can find it easier than the last one because this one has more uh, a clearer trend compared to you or your dollars. Oh, again, this one is uh, the data from the last decades, and we can try to see if we can find any trends in here that repeat itself over the last ten years. Also, if you want the uh, opening price for this kind of Excel, I have the file back in the office in Taiwan. So uh, if you're looking for this, you can uh, come to Yoshif Expert and ask me for it. You can leave your email and I'll send it for you.
Okay, <clears throat> actually, within this uh, pair, we have, I think I have at least established two time periods that's certain and stable. Um, though, due to the time limitation here, I'm able, only able to provide one, but if you want more, then uh, you can ask me later. Okay, the one that I'm going to share here right now is to buy your gold on January the 4th, and if you sell it on March the 8th. This uh, price movement has been repeating itself over the past uh, 10 years for eight times, which means it has 80% of winning rates, and it's a cert, uh, kind of a thing that we could place it to one of our strategies. Okay? So far, has anyone has questions with these two charts that I just provide? Repeat the Euro USD. This one. Yep. Buy at November the 30. Oh, because the the date it doesn't show on November the 30. It should be. November the 30th to January the 4th. Yeah, the history repeats. Uh, in Taiwan, we call it Min Pai. It's like buying lottery, if you know the numbers that's going to repeat itself. But uh, it's, it, well, that was gambling, but this one we are looking for investments and market movements. And market movements in, include human actions as well. And since the last 10 years, these human actions have been repeating over the over seven times. So which means it has a higher percentage to repeat it itself the next decade. Okay, again, this is the uh, chart for gold. And if you would like to take a look at, at, upon it again. Okay. And um, these are all long positions from uh, the US dollars was like November to January, and this one is from January to March the 8th, right? We can also deal with this kind of strategy or this kind of mind concept within daily trading, okay? How do we do it? Well, first, we can open up uh, the four hour chart and we can um, notified every open price on each uh, candlesticks that we saw. We can form up an exile. And then the thing that I noticed that, again, on Euro, the US dollars, if we wait out till the third candlestick, which means um, 12 hours after MT4 has opened the, uh, the market, and then we place pending orders upon the highest and the lowest points of the third candlesticks, this strategy has also a 70% of winning, strategy, uh, winning history. Because either the pending orders wouldn't hit, and then you wouldn't open, so that you wouldn't, need, you, wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to lose. You don't have to worry about it. Or it reached the price and then goes up or breaks down. So you can see this is a strategy that has a lot to do with the trend. So it's a trending strategy. And this is a thing also involves a lot of history data. So uh, if you also like looking forward to know more about this strategy, um, you can also ask me later. Now, these are the three um, my, well, strategies that among these pairs that I want to share. But now, since we all know these kind of things, we can still, we're still able to lose our money in the market. Why? Because investment is not only about timing, it's also about the volume. A bankroll management. And this is a term that usually, uh, you can hear it, this phrase from um, when you're playing poker, especially online poker. Uh, I'm also a Texas Hold'em player an online, uh, online player for about like five years or six years, I think, at least. And this is uh, a term that we use that how much 
do we have and how much do we buy in on the table and how do we like uh, spot out the fish on the table. The bankroll management says that uh, you need to have at least a 1 to 100 leverage whatever you are having. So for instance, if I have 100 US dollars and I'm, I'm looking forward to play on the table, I can only place a dollar for each buy-in. So then I will have 100 times uh, the, the buy-in that I can endure the risk. The same with forex industry. Uh, and I myself found that 1 to 10K among the lots and the bankroll is about <clears throat> the stable bankroll management because you will be able to endure the risk and the rocking during the market movements. Because remember, we're doing like time period things, right? We're doing a time period trading. And some of us will be doing a daily trade, but some of us will be doing the long, like long term trading. And if the long term trading, we ought to look out for what? Pips? We ought to be look, looking for uh, rapid market movements, because sometimes the market will goes up or goes down too rapidly, since the, the good provider found it's, it's uh, too risky for them to endure the orders. And we also have to look out for swaps. This bankroll management let us endure all this inside and still be able to profit from um, the strategy that we just shared before. Okay, so be aware of it. And if we take a hit at first, if we drop our bankroll from 10K to 9K, our lot we need to place is smaller, it's not bigger. Because Martingale says, if you lose one, you place two. If you lose two, you place four. And that's how your account get busted over and over and over again. Okay, You only add up your volume when you're winning, not when you're losing. Okay, That's the clear mindset. And so, well, this is the last part, but um, let's recap what we are sharing today, what we learned today. First, we know that game theory says two games, finite games and infinite games. Okay, infinite games including investments. So knowing that we're investing with a lot of uh, investors that we don't know is the thing that keeps us aware and keeps us um, tightened up, not losing our mindset up so that we'll be able to deal with the market movement. We have five tips that we need to deal with infinite games, deal with investing. We need to have a just cause. Remember the thing that uh, that the start investments. Remember your original need, okay? No matter it's be able to provide better uh, life qualities for your loved ones or families, or you wish to learn more things about the financial markets, remember the cause, okay? So that you wouldn't turn from an investor to a gambler. Tip two, encourages leadership. Always seek help from those who are willing to share his failure. Okay, and who's willing to admit that he doesn't not he does not know have all the answers and he does not know all the questions that you ask him, but he will try his best to find out and share with you. And the thing that he's certain he will teach you. The third part is a trustworthy partner which means in investment is always brokers. Find a broker that you can trust. Find an account manager that you can share your thoughts with him. Okay? And find someone who calls you on the phone, not because he wants you to deposit more or trade more, but because that you're having a baby and he's worried about it. Or your son is going to have a college entrance exam and he's worried about it. Or you're about to maybe get married or some maybe someone like some tragedy that happens and he's really um, on your side he's feeling sorry for you find that type of person and for the worthy rival always remember the rival is ourself okay we always have to deal with the market movement but what kind of goals and boundaries we set for ourselves is the key okay always improve among those kind of things and levels not compare it to others all the way. Okay, we can compare with others sometimes, it helps, but don't focus on others too much. 
And the fifth, a flexible playbook. Okay, we have all these strategies, we have all these bankroll uh, management and mindsets, but we need to use them um, carefully and with our experience. Okay, we need to form our own thoughts or our own ways, like the chef, not the cook. Okay, two time period among euro dollars and also gold. Uh, the time period between euro dollars is November 30 to January the 4th. The time duration from gold is January 4th to March the 8th. Okay, and then the bankroll management 1 to 10k. So I hope that all these that you learn from my speech is uh, little tips for you to advance the future in your trading history. And also I hope you learn that our lives are composed by a lot of games finite and infinite okay and remember we're not merely investors okay I'm not I'm not just a business manager or a lecturer I'm also a point guard of my friends basketball team I'm a League of Legends player I'm a Texas Hold'em player and also a son of my father and mother so remember all these identities that all you have and make sure that you remember these things while you're doing trading so that you wouldn't lose all your resources in it okay so um, may the odds all at our favor. Thank you.